Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you love GNOME's clean, polished interface, you've probably wondered which Linux distribution makes the most of it. Today, we're diving into five top distros that ship GNOME by default, explaining what makes each one special and helping you decide which desktop environment fits your workflow best. Let's get started. Fedora Workstation offers one of the purest GNOME experiences you'll find. The Fedora team releases a new version every six months, so you'll always be running the latest stable GNOME features shortly after they're announced. That means you get to explore new interface tweak, performance improvements, and under the hood optimizations almost as soon as the GNOME developers push them upstream. Fedora also focuses heavily on security. With Selenox enabled by default, you have a robust mandatory access control system protecting your files and services from unauthorized changes. For developers and sysadmins, Fedora's out-of-the-box toolset, straightforward cockpit, DNF package manager, and compatibility with Fedora Silverblue makes building, testing, and deploying applications a breeze. Just be aware, if you need proprietary graphics drivers or closed-source codecs, you'll have to enable third-party repositories manually, and each release is supported for about 13 months, so you'll need to upgrade regularly to stay on a supported version. Manjaro GNOME brings Arch Linux's powerful rolling release model to a more approachable environment. Unlike fixed release distros, Manjaro continuously delivers updates, often within days of upstream releases. So you always have the newest features, bug fixes, and security patches. On top of standard GNOME, Manjaro adds a macOS like dock at the bottom of the screen and swaps out the default software center for PAMAC, which many find faster, and more intuitive. If you're someone who loves tinkering, you'll appreciate uh, Manjaro's access to the Arch User Repository AUR, home to tens of thousands of community-maintained packages. The distro also includes helpful graphical tools for kernel management and hardware detection, making it simpler to get proprietary drivers up and running. Just keep in mind that rolling releases require a commitment to frequent updates, ideally once a week or bi-weekly, to avoid large error-prone jumps. And because GNOME extensions can break on big version bumps, be prepared to troubleshoot occasionally if you rely heavily on them. Ubuntu has powered millions of desktops worldwide, and since version 17.10, it's used GNOME as its default desktop environment, albeit with a few custom touches. Canonical adds a Persistent left side dash for pinned and running applications enables desktop icons by default and replaces the stock GNOME software store with its own app store. This balance of familiarity and innovation makes Ubuntu a go-to choice for beginners and seasoned users alike. One of Ubuntu's biggest draws is its predictable release cycle. Long-term support LTS editions appear every two years and receive Updates and security patches for five years. Ideal if you want a set it and forget it system. If you prefer more up-to-date packages, you can opt for the interim release every six months, though those are supported for just nine months. Ubuntu's hardware compatibility is second to none, thanks to extensive driver support and partnerships with OEMs. And with AppArmore enabled by default, you get an extra layer of security. On the flip side, some users dislike the Snap-based software store for its slower launch times and larger package sizes, and there's an opt-out anonymized telemetry feature you'll need to disable if you're privacy conscious. PopOS from System76 takes GNOME and elevates it for power users and creators. Based on Ubuntu, PopOS ships with NVIDIA drivers pre-installed on a dedicated ISO, so gamers and GPU-accelerated workflows work seamlessly out of the gate. The standout feature is PopShell, an extension that brings automatic window tiling and a keyboard-driven workflow directly into GNOME. Instead of the standard activities overview, PopOS retains the pre-GNOME 40 vertical workspace switcher, and it replaces the GNOME software store with the custom Pop Shop, which handles DB and Flatpak packages without snaps. You'll find tailored apps like System76 Power for fine-grained battery and performance control, and streamlined installer options for advanced disk setup. The trade-off, Pop OS often lags behind in GNOME upstream releases to ensure compatibility with its extensive customizations. 
But if you want a distro that's ready for intense multitasking and developer-focused workflows, Pop! OS is tough to beat. Zorin OS is built on Ubuntu LTS and features a heavily themed GNOME desktop designed to look like Windows. Right away, you get a taskbar at the bottom, a start menu style launcher and quick access system settings, all designed to ease the transition for users coming from Windows. With the Zorin appearance tool, you can switch between layouts that mimic uh, Windows 7, Windows XP, Mac OS, or choose the standard GNOME activities overview. Zorin comes with Wine pre-installed, so you can run many Windows applications without additional setup. The core edition is free and covers most use cases, while the paid pro edition unlocks extra layouts and premium software. Do keep in mind that major Zorin upgrades often follow Ubuntu LTS releases by several months and some advanced features require the Pro license. But for anyone looking for a smooth Windows-like entry point into Linux, Zorin OS delivers a friendly, low-friction experience. Choosing the right GNOME distro comes down to your priorities. If you want unmodified GNOME straight from the source, go with Fedora. If you crave continuous updates and don't mind weekly maintenance, Manjaro is your rolling release playground. Ubuntu offers rock-solid LTS stability and unmatched community support. PopOS supercharges GNOME for productivity and gaming, and Zorin OS welcomes Windows migrants with open arms. Which GNOME distro will you try next? Drop your choice in the comments below. Hit that like button if you found this helpful, and don't forget to subscribe for more Linux tips and reviews. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.